just introduce yourself very briefly within one minute. When did you meet uh, first meet the master? How long were you at uh, with the master as a bhikshu? And that's enough. Okay, so I, I, I left my demon teacher in Montreal and uh, I arrived at Gold Mountain. I believe it was 1977 could be and i was ordained no it was must have been 76 no it was uh who knows i can't tell you but anyway i was there for 15 years i know that i was ordained in 1979 as a bhikshu uh -huh. and um that yeah and i probably was shirful's worst disciple no I, I, you were time. actually one of his best one of the best meditators uh, that I know of at the CTTB, so uh, I compliment you for that. We spent many hours together, you know, in the... Well, it was part of... Yeah. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's get down uh, this uh, to just tell a simple story that's uh, about being with the master. This is part of a, 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 a six-part stories from different people that are, that are senior disciples like yourself of the master that I want to gather together one place just for, uh, in, you know, talking a little bit and getting a feeling of what it was like to be with the master. So nice. that's what this is about. So tell a story that comes to mind. So the ones that will come to mind, uh, this story uh, by the way, I have to give you a warning that I've rehearsed this story so many times in my mind, you never know how close it is to reality. I would really <laughs> love it if somebody was there when this happened and uh, could tell me what I got wrong and also tell me some pieces of the story that I never learned. Okay. But anyway, this happened soon, not long after uh, I was ordained. I uh, I had been I had been selfishly meditating all morning every day and uh, uh, only worked for the monastery in the afternoons and Shifu asked me to work at the Buddhist Council for Refugees which we had started in 1979 but I wasn't part of it until 1980 okay. and I hated that work <laughs> I hated being in 24-7 of human anguish and it was the worst thing possible for a person who is attached to meditation. I don't anyway, know. I don't I know. I also had a problem with oh. the Justice Department, federal, and a, a big portion came also from uh, the California Social Services. And so, anyway, uh, I complained about this to Hung Guan, and Hung Guan was my kind of overseer. Yeah. And so, I, and I'm sure he's the one who reported th my disgruntlement to Shifu. Uh -huh. So anyway, at this time, Shifu, Shifu was met, was lecturing in Wonderful Words Hall. Do you remember where that yeah. was? Yeah, I remember yeah. going to those. Yeah. That's where the master Sharira and other things are right now, really. Yeah, it was right across the street from Shifu Wordless Hall. Oh, right. I see. And anyway... Uh, and you know there was there was carpet there at the time, and I was sitting on the floor. And Shifu had a raised seat. His seat was maybe mm, three feet high, you know. Uh -huh. um, and and uh, and I believe, and this is something I would like somebody to tell me if they remember. I believe Hung Guan was uh, translating, so he would know. It would if whoever was translating that day would maybe fill in the details. But anyway. Uh, Shifu started, uh, as soon as it was time for him to start uh, speaking, he started grumbling about Hung Chi. My name is Hung Chi as a monk. Yeah, I remember. Uh, and, and he always insisted that meant Chi Guai, which is strange, and not <laughs> Chi Mian, which is wonderful. <laughs> so, uh, and, I, and I knew right away that I was in deep trouble. And uh, a little bit of this was being translated to me. And then Shifu rose up from his high seat. He came down in front of me and he bowed, not just bowed, he bowed 
to the ground. I have never seen Shifu ever bow to the ground ever oh. in any situation. Now he got, you know, he bowed in the middle of the Buddha hall, but he never bowed to the ground. In front of me, he bowed completely to the ground. And uh, of course, I I fell on the ground, I fell on my face. And then <laughs> Oh, you bowed yeah, back. You bowed back. Yeah, I, I was down on my, I was completely I, I was completely in shock from uh -huh. here on out. And then Shifu picked up the incense board, you know, the the uh, the wooden sword. Yeah. I, I don't I was trying to remember. We never meditated in there. What yeah. was an incense board doing there? Maybe he was planning to hit me. <laughs> anyway, it was there. Uh, it was on the bow, you know, the on the bowing cushion that Shifu bowed on. Uh -huh. He picked that thing up and he and he stood up and he raised that thing to the ceiling and he started to roar. Wow. And it was, it was the most awesome rage you can imagine. It, <laughs> he was at the top of his voice. And I had no idea, of course, what he was saying. And I, that, at this time, I had gotten up and I was, I was right underneath him. I was waiting for him to beat me. Something I should tell you, and you can cut this out if you don't want it. But I, most people wouldn't have the same reaction. I was actually beaten by my previous teacher. He was a Zen master and he would hit us with a stick. I mean, a hardwood hickory stick. And he would hit us, well, in meditation, he would hit us so hard, we would actually bounce off the ground. We, he would hit us so hard that our our, our shirts would stick to our back. Uh -huh. uh, but, so I, I was, I, I knew that that was part of, that was, in my mind, I I just knew I was going to take my beating, and I was right next to him. In fact, in my memory, I was touching him. I could feel his robe, and he was standing there like this. And then everybody ran out of the hall. There, there must have been what hundred people in there or so. Everybody, you know, the whole assembly, ran out of the hall. How that happened, I don't know. And then. I'm just saying, I didn't run. I was, this is my, this is, I'm going to take my blows here. That's what I was sitting there like this. And Shifu kept on roaring and roaring. And uh, Fongo Wu was there, you know, uh -huh. and she was taking care of Shifu. And she insisted that I had to leave. And I wouldn't leave. And she said, you must leave, you must leave, you must leave. And I can't tell you how long it took, but eventually I also went out oh. of the book. And um, she, made it, she made me feel that if I didn't get out of the hall, Shifu might die. Oh. Something like that. That's the feeling she gave me. That's why I, there was, I didn't chicken out. Oh. I was, she was, you know, we, we respected Fong Wu. Right. She was so and so so diligent in the way she cared for him uh -huh. and so i couldn't ignore that is so i went still, outside is she, she's still alive i don't think so i can't i i tried to find out it would be wonderful to talk to her about that yeah because who knows maybe when shifu had this maybe shifu was roaring get out of here if you don't leave i'm gonna die or he might have said, I'm going to Nirvana. Who knows what he was saying? And I've asked many people, nobody remembers what was being said there. If Hong uh -huh. Wan was there, maybe he would remember. Uh, anyway, I went outside and I, I knelt outside there for a while, but I was very confused. My mind at this time was, you know, where where am I going to go to cultivate? What can I where can I cultivate if I don't if I don't cultivate here? I had never I was so, so grateful for the opportunity of cultivation that we had at CTDB. And so that's something that I had to deal with. Eventually, I went back to, uh, to Tagata Monastery and uh, con con contemplated my repentance. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and did you repent? I, I did, but I don't know what I said. And I'm pretty sure it was phony. Because I really didn't understand. I didn't understand for a long, long time. That was the beginning, by the way, Richard, of four and a half years of torture. Shifu tested me for four and a half years. 
Oh. He made it. He, 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 every time I was somewhere on the guests would come, he would say, and this is my Hung Chi. This is my strange disciple. And I have no way to teach him. I had to bow to him. And of course, if they were Chinese and the, the, the master bows to the disciple, they know the disciple must be a disgusting person. And so uh, I dealt with that and I did this awful, torturous work at the Buddhist, uh, at the refugee center for four and a half years until I passed the test. I did pass this test. I didn't pass the next one, but this one I passed. I had an epiphany. All of a sudden, it was instant. You would, you could call it a kai wu, I guess. It was instant. I, I realized that this could indeed be my practice. And I was thinking, I don't remember if you remember in the Sarangama Sutra, there's this bodhisattva. He's called leveling the ground bodhisattva. Yeah, I remember well. And all he did was petro very gravel. Yeah, that was his practice. And I thought, that's I could be the refugee settling bodhisattva. Right. And, you know, just like the whole world changed in that instant. Right. And along with that, I understood now that I was ready to do Biguan, because that's when I went, I did Biguan. And so I, the next, uh, so I realized there's nothing, I, nothing will me back now. Shifu yeah, always the, was pointing. The, there's one thing I don't know if you remember, but I remember during that period between 1980 and 82, when I left, uh, Shurfu said to you, if you can sit four hours straight in meditation, then you can sit uh, five, you five. Can, five. Then you could sit in the Buddha hall with Tung Kung. And you all of a sudden you came and joined me in the in TEM to meditate. You were there every day and you meditated long. You were a much better meditator than I was. And I remember Shurfu allowed you, and you were the only one that he allowed in the TM besides myself. Uh, to meditate all day, if you yeah, want. He, he allowed me to do that. Well, no, he only allowed me to do the five hours in the morning. I always had to do some other oh. work. I, I started when I was still the shaman era. When I, yeah. Before, be, well, I was still a shaman when he let me do that. That was very arrogant of me, you yeah. know, because I, I had heard that Shifu had said this, and I went up to him and I said, you know, Shifu, you said this, and I can do it. And so he said, "Okay, you can. Uh, after Wazalka, you can you can sit for five hours." Yeah. And then I, after after Shufu bowed to me, then I didn't do that anymore. I just did, I just did my um my my refugee work and as much uh, meditation as I could squeeze in, you know. Yeah. But then I went before Shufu. This is another interesting. Maybe maybe you have an, a question about what happened. That was I remember this. You know, before I meditate every morning. I, I think of my teachers. And when I think of Shurfu, this is the story that I think of. Shurfu bowing to me and then <laughs> with the stick above his head. Yeah. I, I would pay a lot of money to anybody who would could tell me what Shurfu was roaring about. Uh, I think you the only way to find out is to let it go and let the reply come to you. <laughs> And it may become someday. It yeah. will. It will come if you let it go. If you stop seeking it, it will come. You know, that's the way. <laughs> it comes through the back door. But but the important thing is, is it took me many years to realize what. So now I'm I'm at peace with it because I understand what a gift it was for sure for right. to do that. I mean, he did an enormous thing. He bowed to his disciple. It's, in, it's incredible. It's unheard of. Well, you know, I, I, he, would, I would interpret he, that. Even I was black and blue, he, it would have not been as bad as that. He couldn't have hurt me any worse away. Well, that, that's what he's an expert at, knowing how to use his energy. <laughs> so that's a very good story. I love it. So, and then I'll, I'll just do a little follow-up on that, because when I decided to request Shurfu to go into seclusion. Uh -huh. I see, so the whole assembly at this time had seen me 
um, being derided for four and a half years. Uh -huh. I had said nothing but bad things about me for four and a half years. And so here was Hung Chi, the, the scum of the earth, and now he wants to go into seclusion. And so uh, this is another case of Shifu grabbing, grasping the moment. Because when I, so I did the whole thing in the big assembly, this was in the 10,000 Buddha Hall, and I, I made my circumambulations and my bowing cloth and the whole bit, and I made a confession. And then I told the assembly what had happened, how I realized now that this is okay with me. I can do, I can resettle the refugees for the rest of my life. It won't, it's no problem. But I also said, you know, Shifu always said that Biguan is the best and uh, nobody was really doing it. And I think I can do it. And I actually requested to go on top of uh, Wonderful and Mountain and, and meditate up there. And what Shifu didn't say yes or no, he just started to chuckle. He started laughing, and then he said, well, so Hung Chi wants to go into seclusion. Now, what does everybody think about this? So he, he tested everybody, see if they knew what was going on. And you weren't there at this time, but nobody stuck up for me. Oh, everybody, that's typical, that's typical. <laughs> and they all, not only that, Richard, they piled on. Yeah, yeah. They, took, they said how arrogant I was, oh, and, yeah. and which was true, and how attached I, to meditation I was, which was true. I, I couldn't deny any of that. But then after everybody had done this, then Shifu said, ah, oh, this is just the right thing. Hung Chi is doing exactly the right thing. He was all smiley. Yeah. And so, yeah. And so, yeah. although he changed it, he said, uh, later he sent me a message and said, you can't go up on the mountain. We, it's too hard to take care of you up there. You have to do a traditional. Yeah, there's no walk. water up there. I go up every Sunday. I walk. Oh up yeah. Every yeah. I've never been up there. Oh, uh, when you come here, I'll take you up. I go. I okay, go up I would like to do that. I would like to do that. About four hours up and back. But there's no water, no no food, of course, and also uh, you never know about mountain lions and things. Mm. <laughs> well, that, wouldn't have been a, that wouldn't have threatened me at all. I'm very comfortable in the wild, but I, I of course, that was a that was a romantic idea, you know, going on the mountain. Yeah. And uh, and eventually he said, okay, he said, just pick a room that you think is a good one that's quiet, and then you can fix it any way you want to, and then you can start your biguan there. And so I I picked a place right across from the boys' school, and I built a huge fence so I couldn't see. But I, there was a little triangle where I could go outside and walk. So I right. wasn't included completely. I could actually go outside and look at the sky. If yeah. I remember correctly, you were in for three years, three months, and three days, right? I was. And at that point, I wrote Shifu a letter. He had never said a thing to me. And I wrote Shifu a letter. And by that time, I had finished memorizing the Sarangama. But... Uh, I, I wrote a letter and said, you know, it's three days, three, you know, we had never agreed on how long it was going to be. It was, I was yeah. just going to go into seclusion. And so, of course, I knew about the three, three years, three days and three, three months and three days. And so when that time was rolled around, I wrote a letter and I said, you know, I don't think I'm done. I think I should stay in, but I'll come out if you think I should like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shifu never said anything. So he, he didn't say he didn't send a message back. He just left me in there. <laughs> so how long did you stay? So then when four years rolled around, uh -huh. I started to feel like I was cooking sand. You know yeah, that expression? Yeah, yeah, I right. felt like, You're yeah, what I'm, any further. I'm pushing against a place that's it, no, it's not going to give. And so I need to get in, get the experience of the world and like that. I had no idea. I, I think actually, Richard, that for those four years, I think I was almost continually in a kind of samadhi. Yeah. Because the time went by so fast. It was just like, it was the fastest four years of my life. It just went by in a split. And and um, so I wrote him a letter and said, uh, you know, I really think, I, I again, I said, if you think I should stay in here longer, that's fine with me. But I think I should come back and rejoin the assembly is how i put it and again he didn't re reply 
Uh, and so he just left me in there. Yeah. But then uh, I found out, I guess, that a few months later, Shifu was waiting for a special uh, feast day. I don't remember. Maybe it was Buddha's birthday or something like that. When there was lots of guests at the city, then he brought me out at that time so that there could be a big to-do about it. Oh, that's great. Did Shifu uh, certify your memory of the Shurangama? And how long did it take to memorize the Shurangama? It took about it took about three years. And you know, <clears throat> did Shifu was, ever ask you to recite in any in yes, any of it did. in front of him? He did, and uh -huh. <clears throat> and I lost it very very fast. You know, because uh -huh. because I was I was reciting every day. I was memorizing parts, but I was always I couldn't. I never. I was in. I never ever just recited the whole thing from start to finish. Uh -huh. Although I think I could have done it at, at the peak of my memory. But remember, I was doing this in Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was amazing that I could do it. And I studied it very strongly, too. I had th three commentaries also in Chinese. So I was I spent a, a, a good hunk of the day memorizing and a good hunk reciting and then a hunk in the afternoon of studying trying to figure out the meanings of some of the passages can you tell us a little bit about how you memorized it how you would go about it like little sections at a time big sections at a yeah. time yeah i'm pretty good at memorizing i don't know why i think maybe because when i was a kid we memorized um we memorized bible verses my dad was a uh, lutheran pastor and we memorized oh. But it's also just a, 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 a something that I I do easily. Like I, right now, one of my hobbies is to memorize poetry, and I think I I have maybe fifty poems I know from memory. Oh, good. So I'm just it's, it's just a matter of repeating it, closing your eyes and repeating it, and then you know, it eventually just gets set in there. I didn't have any special method. Okay. Uh, Darn Master Chi, this is a great interview. Uh, <laughs>